SAP Business One 9.1 Production Module Enhancement. With production module, we have the ability to capture production costs and have visibility over production capacity and time. Bills of materials and production orders can now be managed flexibly. We now have the ability to manage byproducts. Let's go to the system and see how this works. Here we have SAP Business One 9.1. Let's start by going to resources and open up resource master data. We already have here some resources defined, so let's choose one. Resource master data is like business partner and inventory master data. We have always the numbering and the different tabs here. But what is new, we have resource types. We can either have machine, labor or other types of resources. Then the next one, what we have is a resource group. This can be freely defined. And we have defined here three different groups. Let's open this definition up and we can see for machines, we have uh, defined default costs for electricity and water. We can define up to 10 different costs. This will be always defaulted then in resource master data once we select the group here. Of course, user can manually adjust these costs if so required. Then we have resource uh, time units. Here, in this case, one hour, one uh, unit per time period. And on general tab, we have the issue methods, backflash or manual, and resource allocation, either automatic or on due date. On due date is the default one, but in this case, we have automatic. I will show the effect of this later on in a demonstration. Then we have capacity data per warehouse for the selected time period. Then we have planning data. Here we have daily capacity factors, eight hours and two shifts. And this results in 16 hours of daily capacity. We have as well tabs for fixed assets, properties, attachments and remarks. Then let's go to resource capacity. Here we can view capacities for different types. Let's start by choosing internal. This is the one what we have defined as our capacity. This comes from uh, via setting the daily internal capacities. So let's open this window. Here we can always, after having defined the resource master data, we can define the capacities. We can have here the capacity period selected, warehouses. We can even update individual resources if so required. And here we can choose either the data from resource master data or we can enter into a grid manually. We can as well increase or decrease capacities. So let's do it. Let's select one uh, resource, say L1000. So let's select here L1000 and increase it by two hours. Now you can see we have 16 hours currently the capacity, but once we update this, it will go up to 18 hours. We can as well increase or decrease by percentage. Now let's go to production and bit to bill of materials. Let's look for the one that we already have defined. And here what we what is new is uh, we can include different types. We have items, resources and texts text. Text can be used, for example, instructions. Like in this case, we have a short instruction step by step. Then what as well is new, we can uh, freely change the order of the rows by simply using these arrow buttons. We can move up and down several or sim uh, individual rows at one time. And then here we have the resource quantities. 
we can even include additional quantities if you want even say for setup time or if we have standard wastage or something we can include it in here we can define our warehouses and the issue methods and here we can as well include byproducts for this bill of materials there is one byproduct and it is entered here as a negative quantity for this byproduct we have selected issue methods manual so that when we report completion we can choose the, amount, the number of byproducts we have created. Then we can as well uh, add comments on row level. We can uh, define a different VIP account than the standard one. And we can include even user defined fields. Here we have defined one for priority. This will then carry it over, will be carried over to production order. So let's go to production order and plan a product. Let's choose our bomb and let's plan, say, 20. And let's choose as the due date next week, Tuesday. Here we can now see uh, the planned quantities of course plant quantity times base quantity we have the plant quantity here as well we can include additional quantities then we can see what the issue method is we can change it here and we see the run times run time for the plant ones and run time for additional times this comes of course as well from a resource master data from the times that we have defined and as well the UDF, the value that we defined in a bill of materials, is here. Let's add this one. And now let's go to resource capacity. Here let's refresh. No change in here. But in committed, we can see what we have now planned for next week Tuesday. We can see a difference here. We have uh, on these two rows 20, and the reason being is when we go to resource master data, we can see that the resource allocation we selected was on due date. So everything will be planned for the due date. Here, where we have uh, uh, not the 20, but less, then it uh, takes the available quantity from due date and distributes it uh, backwards to available days. For this one, we should have automatic, and so we do. We can as well, when we click here, we can see the production order. And of course, if we see that the schedule gets tight, we can change the planning of our production orders simply by using as this uh, as visual aid. So let's go back to production, to our production order that we just created. Let's release this. And now that we have released, we have everything backflash, so no need to issue components. We can just simply go and report completion. Here, now, here we can now enter the quantities for our byproducts. So in this case, we were able to produce produce 22 byproducts, so we can add it. Now, of course, the planning we have consumed, if we were here to go to consumed, we can see because we completed the production order, we will see everything here. So let's go now back to our production order and let's close this. Now we can go to summary tab and go to journal remark. We can see all the individual resources posted to their own accounts. 
these accounts are defined in advanced account determination or we can as well use the default one for resources what we have available let me just show this to you as well let's go to administration setup financials gl account determination and go to resources the options here we can define the accounts for each of the standard costs or per default we have for all always for resources the advanced option is available so here as well we can define then advanced rules for for resources we as well have the ability to do VIP mapping we can consolidate from account to account and this one we have as well activated here this is in case we want to say we are producing example a wheel so we can then consolidate the individual component costs when closing the production order. Thank you. This concludes the demonstration.